Hi, I'm Chris Eubanks, and you're listening to Black Spin Global Podcast. Hello, guys. Welcome to the Black Spin Global Podcast. I am Lucy. And I'm Eugene. And welcome to a brand new episode. Today, we have... How, how are we going to introduce this? Friend this of the this pod is not now. Friend of the pod. Friend of the pod. Second appearance on. Second appearance on. And we're in New York. Like, we're on, in New York. You're, you're forgetting something big. Because whenever I'm on Twitter, all I'm seeing is, yo, ESPN. Oh. We only want to see Chris. We only want to see Chris. Only want to see Chris. Obviously, we have Christopher Eubanks back here that again. Guy. Hi, Chris. Hey, what's up, guys? Thank you, you for us. joining we, us. We really appreciate you joining us, man. No, nah, it's, it's a, with all the work you guys do, I, I said, I, I love coming on and just talking tennis. It's like, that's what I do, literally. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> But no, and to see how much work you guys put in, I'm like, man, anytime I can sit down and talk with you guys and answer some questions, we've been talking for the past 30 minutes. Like, it's a match day schedule. You guys have been like, what? Yeah. Like, so excited. Yeah. Like, like, that stuff is cool to me because like, that's the, most of the people I'm around, those are just like normal things. Yeah, so to see you guys true. like so excited about tennis, so excited about yeah. you know the behind the scenes, mm-hmm. like so excited. Like that's, I like, oh man, I, if I get the chance, like I, I got, I got to, you know, help out when I can. So this was, this was a no brainer. But yeah, like Lucy said, you've been kidding on ESPN, man. Like we'll we'll get on to that later on. Okay. We just want to kind of have a recap of like your year because it's been, it's been a a pretty special year for you in terms of like some landmark stuff. Yeah. Um, Let's start with the Davis Cup. So debut this, this year. Yeah. This year after Australia. If you can take us back to that like experience, like was that kind of everything you, well, that you kind of thought it would be? Because it was Ukraine. USA played. And we played uh, Ukraine in, but in Lithuania. Yeah. yeah, so it was, to be honest, I never really thought that much about Davis Cup because I think in, it's probably going to be the same theme for what we talk about later. But um, I've never thought that much about it only because I know to play Davis Cup, you got to be like a top four or six American. Mm. We're strong right now. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Even before this past, like, you know, year for me, like we we're strong, mm. like really strong. So I never put myself in like oh, thinking about, oh man, like it'd be cool to play Davis Cup. I was like, man, oh, it'd be cool to play main draw slam on my own. <laughs> like that'd be nice. That's been the majority of my career. So I never put that much thought into it. And then when it started, the, the possibility came up. They were like, hey, you know, um, I forgot how I found out. I got a text from Bob Bryant. Okay. And he was like, hey, we'd love to have you on the team for Davis Cup. And I was like, Davis, like me, I was like, <laughs> and I was like, absolutely. Like it was kind, of, it was a no brainer. They told me the logistics of it. Finish Australia, play in, play Ukraine in Lithuania. Yeah. So that kind of confused me. Um, and then, um, yeah. So I, I played Australia and open a second round. Taro Daniel, and similar to what I'm doing now, I just stayed behind and did some commentary for a few days, and because I just wanted to. Use that as an opportunity to, you know, get some reps and, mm. you know, get better and learn more and stuff. So I was like, yeah, I'll finish playing and then do commentary all the way up until Davis Cup. We left. Forgot what day. I think I left Friday, Thursday or Friday of like the second weekend. We went to Lithuania. We started up a training week. Um, and then, yeah, it was it was really cool, though. It was a really cool experience. Like myself, Sebi, Fritz. Um, Austin crotch like it was it was really cool and and it was just I didn't know if I would play I didn't know how it worked like we didn't mm-hmm. never really came up I was just excited to be there I was like bro I'm, I got a Davis Cup uniform I was, like, <laughs> I was like this is crazy like I, I used to see that uniform all the time on like Andy and yeah, James yeah, yeah. it's different now but I'm like I'm like man I got one of my name is in it like um I got to have the whole practice week with the practice partners and we did like you know just fun activities and hanging out and all that. So it was, it was, it was really, really cool. And then to go out there um, and get a win, my first match was, mm. listen, I, I don't think I've ever been that locked in in like a <laughs> pre-match. How, how did it come about in terms of you knowing you were going to play? So, uh, I can't remember exactly. I played the first, I think I got thrown in, I got subbed in, I think on day one. Okay. Or something like, I, I don't remember the details. So I, can't, I can't remember exactly, but mm. I remember I, I found out I think the original roster was Fritz, Sebi, myself. And I believe, yeah, it was Fritz and Sebi to play one and two. And then maybe the next morning, I don't, maybe, was it Fritz? Who, no, Fritz 
play? I think Sebi. I think it was Sebi that. Sebi played, right? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, Fritz didn't play. Yeah, he was he was nursing something. That's what it was. He had a really physical match in Australia, and he came to Davis Cup kind of like mm-hmm. still, I think, dealing on the back of that. And um, so he didn't play, and then I got in. But I think because at the time, I think the way it worked is my current ranking then was higher than Sebi's by like a spot. Yeah. Oh. So then I ended up playing one or Sebi. It was weird. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm literally learning all this stuff on the fly. I'm just like, so I'm gonna play. <laughs> okay. All right. Cool. So just let me know who, when. Like I was so ready to go, and obviously you have that my first time. Those guys have played Davis Cup before. They'll play Davis Cup many more times for the U.S. We gonna see about me, you know. Like so, like my big thing is like when I went out there, I was like, oh, like I played a guy. I think he was like four hundred, but good young player, yeah. like nothing to lose. I was like, I'm not. I'm doing. Like Francis said after this match the other night, he goes like, I was gonna die for that win. Like I was like, no, I cannot let these guys down. Like I cannot. I do not want to let Fritz and yeah. Seven like, awesome. and was it like- Austin and Cross. Like I didn't want to let the team Bob, uh, mm. Dean. I was like, I just. I can't let so I went out there trying to be as locked in as possible. I played really well. Did, did it take you back to like college in terms of like that kind of team environment or not? Not really. Not it, the one thing that's different about it is in college we have six matches going on at the same okay. time. Oh. This is just. But I never one time in my college career, my freshman year against Georgia, I was the last match on, and one more time my freshman year, I think against Virginia, I think I was the last match on. But it wasn't a deciding match. Okay. It was like I think in both cases we had already lost, like lost four two. And I was still on, and then maybe I won and pushed it to 4-3, something like that. But it wasn't like, you know, big time. Yeah. Davis Cup is big time. It's like being the last match on when all your teammates are watching, it's a different kind mm-hmm. of pressure. So I didn't have that feeling in college. So I can't speak to, like, how similar that is because, like, mm-hmm. I just, you know, like, my matches, it was like we were all on, and a lot of times, like, I was first, second, or third off. Occasionally I had, like, some long ones, whatever. But I – a lot of the guys who play like six and five, they had that last match on feeling multiple times. Okay. Mm-hmm. They played just the game styles were just that's how they played. They wanted to make it long. Yeah. So they had that everybody's watching, like cheering after every point. Like they I didn't have it as much. So that's just from my but I can see it. I can see it being very, very similar. Fair. But based on your reaction, you will definitely do it again if you Oh yeah, you if I get the chance to do it, I'm gonna do it again. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. That's good. That's great. The Olympics now. Let's talk about the Olympics. I, I know we're kind of going back and forth because I do want to talk about like your Grand Slam kind of results as well this year, but I want to just focus on the kind of highlights. So the Olympics, this was your first Olympics. Yeah. Mm. Um, Paris, obviously you, you played in Paris before, Roland Garros many times. But yeah, like just talk, take us back to like, I don't know, getting the, finding out you were selected for one. Um, and then, yeah, the experience of being there, like opening ceremony, everything. Uh, so when did I find out? So I knew I was like the fifth or sixth American. I knew I was like somewhere around there. I knew you had to be top four again. Mm. And then I think who that I knew that for somehow it was going to drop like one or two spots. Don't remember exactly how, but I knew like it was probably going to drop one or two spots. And I was like, Oh, I'm kind of close. And then, so I believe I heard the the cut for it was after the French. I was like, it's not like I'm dropping any points before the French. So like, <laughs> I was like, it's the only way to go up for me. Like, I lost every single match, but I was like, I, I can make up some ground and give myself maybe like, you know, a little bit more cushion. Um, lost every match of the Claygore season. And then uh, still ended up getting it because I was the fourth. I was still the fifth or sixth. I can't remember exactly, but I, I got in. And um, yeah, no, I was that was... That was kind of like my reaction of being like, wow, I'm going to go to the Olympics. Like that's even outside of tennis, outside of sport, that's like something you could always yeah. take pride in putting on your, like I was an Olympian, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. So I was like, yeah, Atlanta, DC, sorry. Like if I get in, like I'm, I think I'm, I'm for sure going to go. And so it came to me, I got the opportunity. It was even more special to like have that with Coco. Yeah. yeah. That, that part was like really, really cool. Mm. Um, her first Olympics, which should have, mm. which could have been 2020 in Tokyo, mm-hmm. um, mm, but it wasn't. So yeah. to share that with her too and to see hers and then to have her be the flag bearer, like yeah. everything was like, I'm sitting there watching it like, wow, this is really special. To see yeah. all the other athletes just like, Ooh, and just like worshiping this girl. I'm like, I'm saying we're walking through dining and people are coming, oh my God, go, go. And I'm used to like tennis fans, but these are like full fledged, like 
professional, like <laughs> best world's best athletes, and they are like fawning over this girl. And I'm looking, I'm like, are you really like a uh, big deal? Like it was like <laughs> it was cool to also like see her the way she handles that stuff is like yeah. unbelievable. She yeah. takes it in stride, like like she always is. Gracious with a picture. Oh yeah, sure. Oh, like, can you make a video? Uh, yeah, hi. Okay, what do you want me to say? Okay, like, oh. she's like so chill about it. Like, she's she's unbelievable. At it. So I'm like, I'm watching that, and then just taking in like the opening ceremony, everything that came with it. Mm. Like, it was it was really one of the coolest things in my career. Mm. The thing is, is that from the outside, it's funny. I think there was even a little joke on social that was saying like. It seems like the tennis players were the stars at the mm. Olympics or something mm. like that. Like a lot of people were trying to get pictures with like Coco, Nadal, Alcaraz, yeah. and everything. Yeah. Like it was given that vibe. Would you agree? Would you think is it was just all athletes all together? Because there was another. I can't remember her name. Sorry, there was a rugby player who Ilona was so Meyer. yeah, she's so hilarious. excited about she seeing Shelly. Yeah, had some of the funniest interactions I've ever seen between two people. I yeah. was so like Emma, like, Emma had done like, the imitating thing. each other, like <laughs> doing accents back and forth. And, yeah. like, we're getting ready to get on the bus and uh, to head to the opening ceremony, and they're just going back and forth, and it's like just. They're just funny. It's just like, yeah. it's weird. It's just like, like she said something funny. Emma said something funny back. She, and then Alona yeah. said something. And they would do something. And it was just kind of like, like, I was like, oh my God, this is hilarious. Yeah. Then, so so yeah. you feel like it was like an excitement thing for all athletes? Or do you think like it no, was? No, there were, there were definitely some athletes that were different. Right. Like there were there were some athletes I'm like like the NBA guys. Yeah, yeah like like but yeah. we didn't see them as much because they weren't in the village. I heard that but like, as well. Yeah. But like, were you guys in the village? Because I heard. Yeah, that. yeah. I started in the village okay. and then I went I went to a hotel. Okay, so well, we you had the started. option. Yeah, I started. I did like two. I did two nights in the village and then and then I was like, all right, can I get a hotel? <laughs> this, ain't, this ain't for me. What was <laughs> but it? It, it wasn't the beds. Like people okay. always ask us, yeah. was it the beds? It wasn't the beds. It was just. The food in the village wasn't like that wasn't, wasn't what I'm used topic. to. Fair enough. Yeah, that's fair. So like I'm, I like listen the other tennis guys, uh, mm-hmm. Tommy, Fritz, and Marcos. They stayed in the village. They had a great time. They like okay. I was just like okay, breakfast is really good, and then after that I'm like it's <laughs> tough. And they were like oh, you can eat it like, and then it was a little bit of a hassle trying to like leave and go get food like you could, uh-huh. but oh, it was an outside. Yeah, like oh, okay. yeah, if we wanted to go to our favorite restaurant in Paris, we okay, could. It was just such a yeah. hassle getting outside of the Olympic Village, calling an Uber, the Uber finding you, then going to the place, then coming back to a drop mm. spot, then having to walk another like yeah. 10, 15. It was just kind of like, it was, a, it was a lot of hoops you had to go through. Mm. Yeah, Paris was a bit, because I was in Paris during the Olympics and it was really hectic because the city is already so small. Yeah. Like I remember when they introduced like the Olympics at, in Paris, I was like, where's everyone's going to fit? Like, it's just, <laughs> it's just ridiculous. I can... I can imagine, but aside from that, it was a great experience. No, it was a great experience. The Olympics as a whole was a great experience. Like even like watch any other sports as well. No, it was tough. I think once you left the village, it was a little more difficult because Mm. the way that it was set up from the village, like there were buses going to different sporting venues. So, like if you wanted to go to volleyball and you knew which bus it was, like you could just go on the schedule and just go and use your. I think you probably had to have a ticket too. I don't. I didn't. I never tried. Yeah. So right. like you could go and then like go see it and then take the bus back. Like, but once we left the village, it was like, where is it? I got an Uber. Where? And then they go drop off and we got an Uber. I was like, nah, I'm good. Like, so and we yeah. we I made sure to even after I lost, I stayed and tried to support um, each of the guys. I think mm-hmm. I got to see. I for sure watched Austin and Crotch. I got to see Tommy. I got to see Tommy and Fritz in doubles against Vashik and Felix. Okay, I came yeah. back to watch yeah. that. That was really good. Um, geez, Tommy and Fritz were playing some unreal doubles. They, they, they medaled, didn't they? they yeah, they bronze. Yeah. Bronze, okay. Yeah. They were playing yeah. some unbelievable doubles. Um, so, yeah, I tried to, even after I lost, I was like, I still want to come and support a little yeah, bit. No, so, that, that was cool. That that part of it being a team was was nice. Yeah. So yeah, let's, let's talk about the um, the ranking cup. You kind of alluded to it earlier as well. Um, like it's been a I guess a tough year. You yeah. Could say. Like when so th- your points from Wimbledon dropped off after Wimbledon. After Wimbledon, but the points from um, Mallorca. I think the points from Mallorca and Wimbledon dropped at the same, same time. time yeah. I think because like I don't think they drop it. I, I don't know. Maybe new rankings do release um, on the Monday of Grand Slams. Maybe. I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. I know it was a big drop in a little amount of time. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I do know. Because like, like, <laughs> the, the, the question is, like, do you think that's kind of freed you up a bit as well? Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, like even after I lost in Wimby, obviously I was, like, bummed to lose. I mean, Hallis played unbelievable. He played some really good ball. He qualified in. I think he lost a tough on the Holger. I think he... 
beat somebody pretty good second round. So he he was playing well at that mm-hmm. time. Um, and he just straight up beat me. But like even afterwards, I went back to the locker room. I was like, Ooh, all right, well, I don't have that dark cloud hanging over me anymore. Like that we could just play tennis again. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it definitely felt a little bit like because I went from there, I played really well in Newport. Um Obviously left for Paris, came back, and just wanted to get matches gearing up going into the Open and wanted to kind of find my footing again. I hadn't played on hard, obviously, since Miami. Yeah. Mm. So it's like, um, you know, that I lost second round there to Jake Fernley, who went on to win the tournament. He was playing some really good ball. The mm. yeah, yeah, the Brit. Yeah, he's yeah. guy's good. He pushed Novak. <laughs> yeah, I was like, so I was like, this guy, this guy's actually pretty good. Guy's good. Um, so I lost to him, and then I went to Kerry. Played well in Kerry. Won two mm. matches. Lost to Safulin. Four and four. And then the next week I played Winston Salem, won two matches, beat Safulin, saving two match points, I think, one, seven, six, and the third. So and crazy. like then I was like, ah, okay. I hadn't beaten Roman before. I think he had beaten me three times mm-hmm. up until that point. But I'd always kind of like the matchup because it's big hitting and it's he's he's such a good ball striker. It's like we get into these rallies where it's just like pop, 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 and it's kinda like even if I lose it, I'm like Oh, that felt good, like you know, yeah. yeah. But he plays such a he is such a big ball. It's just a matchup that I like. Even when he was beating me, I kind of I enjoyed playing him. Um, and I won that match and got fortunate, obviously saving two match points. But I was like, man, even if I had lost that match, I'd I'd like where I'm playing right now. Like mm-hmm. I'm playing better. I'm playing more like what feels like myself. And yeah, and then came out. Uh, who did I lost tough on the Mickelson? Lost six in the third. And he went on to final, yeah. Really but player. even in that match, even though that match, like that Mickelson match was kind of like, I lost it, but I was like, he got me six in the third, but I'm playing better. Yeah. Like I'm playing yeah. a lot better mm-hmm. than I had previously been pe- playing over the past few months. So, um, lost to him, came here, played a good match against Brendan Nitch, and he just beat me again. It's like Fine. another six in the third. And the funny thing is, after the match, I'm talking with uh, my coach, and I'm talking with Steve, and we're sitting there together. And I was like, man, it's just it's a tough one to, you know, have. And he goes, yeah. And he goes, <laughs> my coach, Ruan, goes, uh, yeah. And it's the second seven, six, and the third, uh, seven, six, and the third uh, in a row. And I went, oh, Mickelson was six in the third. <laughs> and then, and then uh, he was like, oh, I guess I probably shouldn't have told you that. <laughs> so we had a funny laugh about it. I was like, I didn't realize it was two, six, and the third. It was in a row. It's six and the fifth, six and the third, whatever. I was like, come on, man. He was like, oh, my bad. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, that, I mean, that's just the drop, the, the adjustment from being, you know, challengers to all of a sudden being main drawn everything. Like, there's a learning curve that takes place. Mm-hmm. And it's, I feel like it's not just with me. There are a lot of guys who kind of exactly. ascend to that top 100, whether quick or not. And then there's a little bit of, I've seen it from many guys who they have a little bit of kind of like a, whoa drop and then you build it back up and then usually guys are very stable Mm -hmm. that next time you know some people can do it the first time and it's never an issue but i have seen the get there drop and then get back and then it's like oh yeah now i'm back for you know and i'm consistent it's just different with scheduling with being top 50 not being able to play challengers i couldn't go and just get Mm -hmm. matches to like get my confidence i had to play the whole clay court swing. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't not, I couldn't, the, every other year, I went to like Asia during the clay court swing. <laughs> I was like, I'm finding hard courts. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> uh, and then, um, yeah, I would go do that. And now it's like, okay, I played Houston. That was the third time I think I played Houston. After that, I hadn't played. I played, I think, Challenger in Bordeaux a couple years ago before the French. I actually beat Gasquet there. I had to save a match point. Don't know how. <laughs> um, and then I actually got uh, shot by Ilias Emer, second round. Oh. Uh, so I played Bordeaux and maybe something else. I'm just saying it, but I don't remember. My whole red clay court season career mm. in Europe. It was either Houston. I played Savannah Challenger. I did play that in, a, in Atlanta, in Georgia, on green clay. I played that and I played Houston. Before this year, I hadn't touched clay wow. besides oh, wow. uh, the Bordeaux and Roland Garros squallies every year. Mm-hmm. Usually I go to Mexico, play in altitude. The first challenger I ever final was in 2018 in uh, Guadalajara in Mexico during the clay court season. The next week I won my first challenger in Lyon in Mexico mm-hmm. in altitude during the clay court season. Like that was what I did. And now I come into this year and I'm like, oh man, I, I, I got to go play it. And like, I'm excited, but it's it's different. There's a mm-hmm. whole learning. I'm like, 
I didn't really grow up playing on clay. Like, mm. So I'm like, I'm, trying, I'm still trying to figure out how to slide. Like, you know, I'm still, <laughs> like, trying to understand, you know, giving a little more space and create, like still playing my game, but mm. like also adapting to the surface. And I think that's the biggest, that was the biggest kind of thing for me. Like, am I going to play straight up how I normally play? Like trying to serve a volley and just run in, or am I going to have to like no. adapt a little bit? Yeah. And I kind of, throughout the whole time, just kind of bounce back and forth between the two. So then I'm not, I'm not winning, and then so the confidence drops, and then you to your original question, you got that dark cloud of like Mallorca's coming up. As much mm-hmm. as you try to ignore it, it's like it's yeah. there. Yeah. You didn't yeah, have to stay in your mind long, but it's 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 there. Mm-hmm. Um, and started to play well, and Halle was up, was in the quarters. I won two rounds of a 500. Um, was in the quarters. So five three in the third on Zhang. Yeah. Served for the yeah. match. Got broken. He held, broke me again, and then held. If I hold there, I'm in the semis of a 500. My drop isn't nearly as mm. big. Such fine margins. Like, it's yeah. not like it's it's literally like I'm still top 100. I think I didn't do the math okay. because I was just happy to be winning matches. So I was like, okay. I'm just gonna put my head down and just play. But like, I'm no dummy. Like I know <laughs> I know I know how to point. So like, <laughs> without looking it up, I kind of have a rough estimate. So I know like I didn't. I didn't think about like all of that, like serving for the match, but like there's extra tension that's there. I think in the back of your of mind that you want to you're forcing it a little more because in the back of your mind, you, that is, it may be somewhere in your mind. Mm. Like, even if you're not thinking of like, man, I got a lot of points I got to defend. My body's telling me step to the line, yeah. go flat wide, like <laughs> hit your spot and, and be ready. And then he hits, I missed my first serve. I'm like you idiot. How do you miss your first serve? Like, <laughs> like these are the crazy conversations we have in our heads, but. Um, how has um, Steve Johnson helped you as well? Because you kind of, I think you spoke about it in Newport, a bit, yeah. like having him on board, like it's kind of helped you just, yeah, help with perspective. Like. Yeah, I think Stevie, like Stevie is, is unbelievable with his knowledge of tennis and just his knowledge of like, and his, his honesty with regards to like um, the demands of the tour and, you know, how tough it is. Like he's so and so and I've known that for a while and I've always respected his opinion because he's, he's just honest. He's just what he feels like. He's he if he doesn't always give the I just told him about the thing. I was like, I think uh in Halle, I was like, I think maybe it was in the back of my mind when I was serving for it. Mm. He was like, dude, there's only like four guys in the world that that doesn't pop in their mind. Like, mm. like that happened. Like, yes, normal. Like it's just how you did. And I'm like, oh well, this guy was yeah. top 20 in the world. This guy was he had been top 100 for however many years. Like, this guy has, like, three, whatever, however many titles. Like, he's won on clay. He's won a hard, you know, using the backhand slice. Like, so it wasn't just a tennis thing because he's a guy who likes to play with his forehand, is good with the backhand slice, really good server, really good coming in. It was also the I, – I trust his opinion, like, because he's mm. straight up. He's just honest about it. And, and I can just be like, hey, man, this is what I was feeling. Probably shouldn't have felt that way, but it's what I was feeling. And he'll be like, yeah, man, like, that's normal. Or like days I'll come out and practice and I just I'm I'm obsessing over a couple errors I had. Mm. He goes, Hey, like you're a good tennis player. Like, calm down. <laughs> yeah. Loosen up. And it's like again, it's just honest. And I'm just like, oh, well, this guy was top twenty. He says I'm good. I must be okay. Like, <laughs> yeah. You know, so it's it's also hearing like kind of allowed me to put things in perspective. We're at practice. He goes, Hey, you're out here to focus on these things before your match tomorrow. Mm. We don't care about this other stuff. Like, if you're missing, you're missing this shot that you're probably not going to use tomorrow, don't obsess over it. Like, just focus on the things we're here to get better at. And I'll be like, oh, yeah. I don't know why I was obsessing over the one shoulder high back end. I, like, <laughs> you know, hit wide. He's like, you're not going to get that ball tomorrow. We're working on the other slides of the forehand. So it was a good perspective um, as well as, like, good tennis knowledge. Yeah. So, yeah, obviously the slams this year was a bit different and, like, you know, your performances, but most importantly, I've kind of felt like you had really tough draws as well. <laughs> really tough draws. Anytime I looked at the draws, I, I have a little speculation with the draws anyways. That's a whole other story. Well, no, I'm not, I'm not going to put you on the spot with that. That's, I'll leave that between me and Eugene. So round two in Melbourne, you had Rublev. Yeah, boy, he was lighting the ball up that day. Yeah, he, that was like a 4-4-4 four, four, four in like an hour 27. <laughs> this man broke me like early, I think, in every single set. Broke me my first – I served to start the match. Broke me first game. He held, and then we held all uh, – and then held all the way through 6-4. And then um, 
broke me like my second service game in the second set. Like I was like, bro, like I can't get, I can't, I can't apply no pressure. Like if I can't hold serve to three all four all, like I'm having a hard time like making him feel like under duress. He broke me easy, boom boom. I was like, okay. I was, like, and then he went on the quarter. I actually called one of his matches for ESPN. His match against Demonor. Wow. Uh, I think it was like a, it's a fifth set. Both guys were cramping at the mm. end. Yeah, I called that one from in the bunker. And I was sitting up there looking. I was like, yeah, I knew he was playing. It was fourth Ooh. round to make quarters. I was like, yeah, I knew he was playing well. Like, he's, <laughs> I was like, man is not missing. <laughs> so, yeah, that was a tough one. Yeah. That was a tough one. Um, uh, Paris. Paris. Yeah, going, yeah, that was going to be tough. Sinner. Yeah, that one. That was the one that hurt me the most when I saw it. I was like, <sighs> but the thing is, when I hear that, and like I get those draws, like I get so excited because really? I'm like, like, this is a big, this is a great opportunity. It's true. Like, I know my game, like, or I believe my game is, like, good enough to just, on any day, if it starts mm. to connect, I can cause some guys some problems. So, like, I I see those, like, when I found out I got them, I was like, yes, like, cool. Mm. I know that's good. I thought it was going to be on Chatrier. I was like, oh, I'm going to play on Chatrier. I yeah. went out to Chatrier yeah. when Kogo was practicing. I was like, oh, so the boxes are, like, <laughs> all up there, huh? They a little ways away. <laughs> okay. And then the schedule came out. I played on Longland. I was like, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> I was like, I remember that vividly. I was in there, yeah. like, she was practicing with Ostapenko, and I walked in, and I was like, I was like, I was talking to her mom. I was like, uh, which one of the boxes? Yeah. I, was, I was like, oh, yeah, because I think I'm playing in here. <laughs> would, that, would that have been your first time? On yeah, Sanchez? on Chatrier. Oh. Mm. I practiced on it before, but first time playing. Play, yeah. Um, So, yeah, that was – but I look at you, those as, like, great opportunities. That's so, like, great. I I get excited if the draw comes out and I mm. have a big name because I'm like, mm. I can, if I can connect, yeah. Yeah. I can make – I can. we can really, like – we can see, like I think, mm-hmm. I think I give myself a good chance. So it's great because we kind of say that sometimes on the pod with other players, and we say the same thing. Like it's great in terms of like exposure, yeah. or you know, giving them like um, a little bit more like confidence and yeah. motivation. But yeah, just yeah and also that too, it's a good measuring stick. It's mm-hmm. like, bro, I'm playing the best player in the world. Like mm-hmm. if I can push him and I can, you know get a set or whatever. I think he beat me in straights, but if I can like, you know, break his serve on the surface, I'm not like, I'm, I can, okay. It's yeah. a good way to like, you know, just measure up to the how, best. How, how do you feel you played in that match as well against Sinner? I was playing well. I was playing okay. I think I was down to, it mirrored our, our match in 2022 at the US Open. He got mm. up a double break on me in that match and I got one of the breaks back going into the second. I think he got up a double break on me in this same uh, in the first in Paris, I got one of the breaks back, and it was like it was a very mirror image, like I, if I remember right. Um, and then uh, second and third were like I, I wouldn't, I couldn't touch him. Yeah. Really, not really. I think also it started to rain. They co- they closed the roof and the yeah. temperature dropped. So like for me to have a good chance on clay, I needed warm. I need the ball kind of moving through the air. Mm. And it was okay at the start of the match. I used this. I stood wide and went kick wide. Short and sent, tried to send him as far off the court as possible. It's more effective when it's hot. Mm. And then it got cool. And then it's like the ball don't jump yeah, as much. Yeah. He's clubbing the ball. And I'm like, oh, man, it's about to get real tough. Like I felt the <laughs> breeze come in and I, I looked up. They were closing the roof. The referee is behind the court. I'm like, why are we closing the roof? It's it like Cedric Moria. I was like, Cedric, why are we closing? He goes, rain is coming. I was like, Ooh. Okay. All right. <laughs> then it was it was chop after, chop city after that. I almost broke him when he served for the match. I think, I think I got a break point, and then he hit like two three aces. Yeah. It was that was a wrap. <laughs> the handshake, it, it, I find it interesting because I was like, you can see there was like a mutual kind of respect there. Yeah. Uh, no, I, thought, I think like, I, I think Yannick's like, I think he's unbelievable. Yeah. I think he's he's such a nice guy. Like he's it, funny in Paris when I arrived in the locker room, got to the site. Picked up my credential, went to the locker room to like drop off rackets. He was the first player I saw, and he made it a point to walk, come over to me. Like he was went out of his way to go, "Hey, Chris, like how you doing, man? Oh, like nice. good to see you, whatever." And then he went on about his day. It was just like mm. three or four players in the locker room, and like we know each other. We always say, "Hey, like how you doing?" Yeah. And kind of keep it moving. Yeah. But like he was like going the other way, and he like stopped and came over, dapped me up, and went on. And I was like, "Damn, like he, he cool, <laughs> you know?" Like, <laughs> yeah, and then. Uh, yeah, and then we end up playing the draw came. I, like, I was like the first player I saw. Of course, it's him. <laughs> and then after that, you had obviously Wimbledon, and round one we was against um, Hadis. And obviously, you your form picked up during the grass season, anyways. And like you said, like you reached the quarterfinals. But how did it feel going into Wimbledon, especially after the year that you had last year? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't think that much about it because okay. at that point I had gotten to the point where whatever's going to happen, happen. It's going to yeah. happen. 
Got lost first round by Yorker, which was tough. Played a tough one against Mensik. He but he outplayed me in the good third. Good play Yeah, he's really good. Mm. Um, and so, uh, so like by the time I showed up at Wimbledon, I wasn't sweating it. I was like, whatever's about to happen, it's gonna happen. I'm just gonna kind of play. And I really like had some really good practices. I had okay. some really good practices, and I was going into that match really high on confidence. And it was it was like an overcast and cool day. Again, Typical. I like warm. Typical London. And it was Sorry. overcast and cool. It was rainy. We ended up having like a couple <laughs> rain delays. And Halex came out serving rockets. And I was like, Phew, this is about to be t-. He broke me early. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, geez, man, this guy is clubbing the ball. I could, <laughs> there was not much I could do. So like. And coming through qualifying as well. You, 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 when players have matches under their belt, it does show. Yeah. And the thing is like, people like. Like, Hallis is a quality player. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. Hallis was, has been top 100. Mm-hmm. Like, so, I mean, whatever his ranking was at that time to get into, uh, he was in qualies. I don't know what happened. I think he qualified into French, too, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know. I think he, I'm pretty sure he qualified into French. Um, so, he was playing well. Like, it's not like it was a guy I'd never heard. It's like, no, this guy's, a, this guy's an actual player, mm-hmm. despite whatever mm-hmm. his ranking might be. So, like, I didn't go into it underestimating it. And, like you say, coming in from qualies, like, he's, He's a quality player who's been winning matches. Like, yeah. that's dangerous. Yeah. And he, he just, he was straight up too good. Yeah. So is grass still your favorite service? <laughs> yeah. It last yeah, it still is. Like, I got like, a title on it. I got a, I got a <laughs> ride with that right now. <laughs> good to know. And then, oh, one, round one in New York. Another, French, another Frenchman. Another Frenchman. Yeah, I know, Arthur, man. Arthur Rindiknesh. Arthur Rindiknesh. Yeah, he... But this was five, so this was a, a much more closer. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, this was a battle, man. Yeah. I mean, I came out. I played a really, I played a rough first set. Um, I was very tentative, and Arthur had such a big game. He serves big. He hits big off the ground. So if you're a little bit off the gas, he's just clubbing balls, and I'm like on my back foot the whole time. So I lost the first, and then the second, I was like, you know what? I need to just up the aggressive. I'm just going to mm-hmm. get more aggressive on my swings. I'm, like, I'm going to have to go after the ball a little bit more. And I started to find my range on it. And then I started playing well, started serving well. And then it just kind of rolled into I won the second, won the third. Getting to the fourth, he broke me early. I think my first service game in the third. Held all the way through. We played fine. And then we get into the fifth. And I had a couple games early in the fifth. I had to save like two or three break points. I think that was 115-40 uh, in the fifth. I got out of that game. There may have been another like 30, 40 later on. I got out of that game and then we got into the tiebreaker. Yeah. And I mean, he played, I mean, he played too good, man. Like he, he made returns. He what was it one mini break, 10, eight. I think he got up a mini break on me early. I got it back and then he got another one. And then it was just kind of holding serve the rest of the way. But no, nah, he was playing well. Like I still like the way that I'm playing. Like, I know mm. it sounds funny. Like, you know, it's a tough loss, obviously, but the way that I'm playing now is very different than the way. I was playing in like March and April, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like May. Like I was, I'm very confident in like it's going to come together. I, I just, I have to kind of continue to put in the work, yeah. and then it'll, it'll start to click because mm-hmm. I just feel like I'm playing well. I'm f- playing a lot better, um, and at some point you just keep giving yourself the opportunity, mm-hmm. and then you're like, hopefully it, it'll kind of click, mm-hmm. and then you. I've, I've seen what it, what happens, what can happen when it clicks. So mm-hmm. it's like I'm keep working, and I just trust it. Yeah, and like you said earlier, this season was completely different. You had to go through the main draws and everything, yeah. and yeah, so you know, yeah, it's very different. So yeah. I mean, hopefully, I can get there again, and then maybe I know a little bit more. You know, I'm a little bit more, you know, experienced and stuff. I can, I can do it. You know, just yeah, I think just experience helps. Yeah. Did you find it tough going from you know the hardcore to clay to grass and then clay and then oh were you used Not to it really. because of last I lost that clay court match in 45 <laughs> minutes <laughs> wait, 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 wait. like I, I was training and like feeling good in practice and stuff on it and then I was like I lost that match in yeah. I think it was like 56 minutes so I'm like it was under an hour I think Benjamin Hassan who I thought was German and then uh, all of a sudden they're like yeah Benjamin Hassan from Lebanon I was like yeah. what he's dual like he can do that I was like, oh, I still can play. Like, <laughs> like, I still can play. So yeah, he, yeah, no, I, I, it's not like I got, it's not like I was like three rounds in, mm. and then like I, I lost first round in under an hour. So yeah, Chris, let's talk about ESPN now. Um, <laughs> you are literally the the star of, of that network. I'm gonna say that's okay. Now you now <laughs> this is this no, is how honestly, you get in trouble. No, <laughs> no, 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 I am not. I listen, no, let's not do that. Forget Stephen A. Smith. That's how things. That's how things get clipped. Like no, sorry. We're trying to go viral. No, 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 not me. <laughs> not me. I'm but good. Just, just quickly, so Lucy posted. It was. Um, 
pre Medvedev coming yes. on. Yes. Yeah. You did the pre. Ah, uh, yeah. The angle of the camera. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. and like Medvedev looks, I don't know. He looks about five foot. Bro, four. me and Medvedev are like the same height. <laughs> I don't know how that picture <laughs> got <laughs> like the cameraman is so close to my shoulder, and Daniil has like maybe like a foot or two this way. So like it just he's looking like it's like right behind me, mm. and Daniil looks like he's there, but we're the same height. Like That's crazy. so, I looked at the one with Francis actually kind of funny. Yeah. Because Francis is like he's like <laughs> he got like a little smirk on his face, so he's like like man like he's got this like look. It's just funny. Like that one is funny. Like, the Daniel one, like it, I'm like, actually, I'm like, bro, like, how is this possible? Like, yeah. we're, we're the same height. Yeah, he's he's really tall. He's six six, like yeah. I'm six seven, like we're the same height. But, but some some of the comments, so like some of the comments in terms of responses to the post, Lucy, that you you posted. So we had uh, Nessa Peaches. I'm hoping I'm saying that correctly. So the way I'm smiling from ear to ear right now, like just watching you on on TV, like interviewing these players, that was Nessa Peaches. Then we had Lima Limon. Uh, Chris is an amazing commentator. ESPN needs to have him on as much as possible. Uh, and then we had Valerie Hawkins. So this is a long one, but well, 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 sorry, well worth reading. Um, I was disappointed that Chris lost first round, but I can only be impressed with how. Sorry, he suited up uh, and ready <laughs> to go today, providing expert commentary on Medvedev Kaboli Medvedev Kaboli match. And apparently you made a comparison to Medvedev and Luka Doncic. Yeah. So the 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 thing that I, I've I've always been excited to maybe do a Medvedev match because okay. I see people listen. Tennis Twitter is toxic. Oh, it's crazy. I had no idea it was as toxic <sighs> as it is. But also like I'm sitting over here and I like I'll like go through it sometimes. And I was like, see people who just like don't know tennis mm. or like don't understand it. It's just like, because Daniil, they'll say like, how does this guy win? How is this guy so good? Mm. Like he, he just pushes, he just makes balls. And like, I'm like, I played him. Like, <laughs> I know like it's, for us, it sounds like, what do you mean? Like, he's not mm. that good. I feel like a, a common thing about Daniil is that people see his game and they don't see the value in it. Yeah. Or, they're, or they're, they're not impressed by the shot making or they're like, all he does is just run and just make balls. And it looks funny. It, it looks, looks yeah. like aesthetically pleasing. It looks, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but then when you talk to players, they all say like, Daniil is tough. Mm. Like, you don't want to deal with Daniil. Like, Daniil is wow. tough. And it's like... It reminds me, I've heard a lot of like talks about basketball. They say like people, fans, casual fans used to look at Luca. He's not that fast. Yeah. He's kind of slow. He kind of gets in there and it just looks very, it's smooth, but it's mm. like, it's not as, you know, eye popping to watch. It's not like a John Morant. It's not like a, it's like not explosive. Yeah. It's just like, how is he doing this? Like, and I feel that same kind of way about Daniil. And the, another reason is because one thing that Luca is known to do is, listening to a lot of his uh, peers say, they say that you can't speed him up. He plays at his own pace. Mm. Like he's so big, he's so strong. He's quick enough to get past you if he wants to, but he, he'll also slow you down. So if you're trying to like make him go somewhere, he just doesn't let you. And Daniil does that in tennis to me. Like mm. no matter how hard you hit it, Daniil can take the pace off and just send it back flat, deep with like, and takes all your pace off. And he does it again. And he does it again. Consistent. And now you're like injecting pace, injecting pace. Now he's using it against you. And then it's like, okay, well, I'm going to play a little bit higher. I'm going to change it. And he's just like, nope, you're going to keep in the same <laughs> tight ball no matter how you send it over here. And you're going to have to run me side to side off of it. His ball stays so low. It's so tough to attack. So like from player standpoint, we all know how tough he is. And then he'll dial up a service game where he'll hit three, four aces, serve first ball winner. And then you got to serve. And the ball's back at you, and you're like, oh, I got to deal with this again. Like, he ain't going to give me nothing for free. He's going to make me play, and he's going to make me play the same, like, flat, low, just uncomfortable ball. And it's like, that's why I looked at that comparison. I'm like, people see it. The casual fans will see it, and they may not be impressed. But you talk to their colleagues, their peers, they're like, no, nah, they're tough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the fact that you just can't speed them up. Daniel, if yeah. he doesn't want you to hit hard, he'll just... It, oh, I'm gonna play in my pace. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna make some balls like slow and kind of flat and just mm -hmm. ugly and piercing through the court. And then I get a little bit of space. I'll flatten one through the court. Now you're on your heels. Now I'm coming in, and it's just like it's the same type thing. Yeah. Like you can't rush them. You can't speed them up. They're just they're just both that good. Incredible. There's one more comment I need to read. So Carlotta, um, excellent commentary. This is all in caps, by the way. <laughs> by, by CE, she's she's, kept, she's giving you a hashtag. Um, works well with the other commentators. Like, do you prefer commentating or 
Because obviously when you're a commentator, you're in the booth, you're in the kind of in, you're watching mm. the match from start to finish. Whereas when you're doing like the pre and post post match stuff, it's more quicky, I guess, more snappy. Yeah. Like, do you have a preference or uh, not so much? They're very different. Okay. They're mm-hmm. very different. They're very different skill sets. I I think I like the interviews are are very make me uncomfortable. Really? <laughs> Which is yeah. You, you really couldn't tell. They honestly. make me uncomfortable because so for instance so. <laughs> this will be good. I think you guys will like this one. So I understand what it's like to be a player. Of course. And so I kind of know, I'm like, pre-match interviews, I'm not going to give you much. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to go my game, play my game, try for a certain percentage, just my game. Right? And we, we go on, and then after the match, like if I win, then like we're too, we're focused about the match. Like we're not going to really say too much. Mm. And so I know that. So I'm like, okay, I can do the interview. And then my first one, oh, what type of question would I as a player, like not mind answering? Yeah. That can, I'll give you a little something, but I'm not, you're not, you're not about to find out I'm going to serve a volley on every second <laughs> serve. Like, you're not going to find out tactics, but like, I'll give you a little something. So I try to put myself in that position. Mm. Um, and it's just, it, so I can, I can set the pre-match interviews, like questions. I can write them out. And I, and also we're live on air. I'm not looking at anything. So I'm making sure I remember them because mm-hmm. each question also, if it's Gregor Dimitrov, I'm saying like, what's going to be the key tonight? I'm going to paint some context and be like, Gregor, you're, you know, whatever, 12 and four on the year when you do, I'll say like, you're one of, I think last night I said like, you're one of the most informed players of the year. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, what has allowed you, what's been a, you know, key component to you having this, you know, so-called renaissance, you know, to your career back into the top 10, something like that. But like, all I really was asking was, what have you changed this year that has, you know, made you yeah. get you back in the top 10? But like, <laughs> it's like a weird, Give but sometimes like if I'm memorizing it, I'm like, Okay, how am I? How, now that wording doesn't make sense. Why? How that sounds dumb. Now I'm I'm saying like, you know, informed players, informed players. Like you'll say it twice. Like change it up. Uh, you know, whatever. And I'm like having to do this all in my head. And then it's like I have four questions. First one is this. Second one is this. Next person comes up. First one is this. Second one is this. But like I'm not reading it. So it's like mm-hmm. out of my head. I'm like, I'm like really preparing. Like I'm not no joke. Like if I know. We're about to do pre-match interviews in 45 minutes. I like go by myself wow. and I'm like thinking, I'm like, okay, okay. Uh, mm, mm, nah, that may not be good. Uh, now I'm looking at research. I'm like, wait, how many years did they have the quarterfinal? Like Francis, last year was his third consecutive year uh, in the quarterfinals of the U S mm-hmm. open. Uh, and I like have to go back and like, just let me just double check. Yeah. Cause I, I, I know it's, I know, you know, obviously last year the semi, I think, but let me double check. Like I'm making sure I want my facts to be right. Mm. So, cause I know what it's like too, to be a player and someone will say something like, you've never beaten this person. What are you going to do? And I'm like, I, I have beaten them. Like I have, but you just didn't know that. Like, so the interviews are very different. The post-match interviews are a little bit more lighthearted. Okay. I can be, I can, and also thing I like to do is I like to include aspects of the match because I'm sitting there watching the match too. Like mm. you had a big hold at, you know, one all love 40, came you, back in hell and then broke this. Oh yeah, I have like okay. my iPad or I have a pen oh, and paper cool. and I like, I'll write key moments. So like mm-hmm. I'll sit there and I'll sit there as I'm calling them. And I do this with commentary too. Like as I'm sitting there watching the match and a big point happens and someone gets out of a game or they, you know, a lucky shot happens and it, a let court happens. Like I write like 15, 30 let court, okay. one all. Like, so then I can remember and as the end of the set, we're also kind of painting the picture and framing like, how the set went at mm-hmm. some point. We're going to do a summary. And then I have, you know, I'll also tell the producers if something like that happens, I'll say, hey, can you clip the point at 1530? Um, let court. I want to like use that. And then when we come back from the third set, we get into it. We're breaking down. And that's when I like, that's when I like really like to kind of go. That's like yeah. my favorite thing. That type yeah. of like, kind of like the analyst stuff, yeah. explaining like, what happened. Mm-hmm. Um so I do that even when I'm doing post-match interviews. So like I'll write it and be like, okay, that was a big one. I'll ask them about that if they get the set. If they don't, nope, can't ask them about it. Like, <laughs> and it's just the whole time mm-hmm. I'm doing little things like that. So that one I use, I love because I can ask them, hey, what were you thinking at this moment? Mm. Like Francis, when he came back, Popper was serving for the second 5-3-40 love. Francis came back and broke. So my mm-hmm. second question to him was, all right, what were you really thinking? Cause like, and I said, don't tell me that whole, I knew I could fight. Like, what were you really thinking? He was like, oh, I was thinking about the third set. And it's like, yeah, like, that's what you yeah. think. Cause at the end of the day, he won. It'd be bad. Yeah. He wouldn't say that if he lost. Yeah. Like, yeah. He won. So he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was thinking. Like, probably shouldn't have been. Like, so uh, the, the, pre- uh, the post-match interviews I really like. And then I usually end it with like a looking on to the next or something like that. Or I'll ask another mm. question about the match. But the post-match interview, I, I like the pre-match one I stress. 
Because I, mm. I just like, I'm like, ooh, that's just dumb. I'm like, whatever. And because I know guys are getting ready to play. They don't yeah. want to have to answer something stupid. Yeah. Afterwards, they won. Exactly. Yeah. They'll take whatever. You yeah, can get their stats true. wrong and they'll be like, okay. Well, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I did beat him, but so I'm not. Like, so, that's actually true. Yeah. So, and, and calling matches is fun for me for the reason I explained. Like doing color commentary, I'm kind of painting the picture or I'm telling why a shot is a little bit more difficult than maybe what mm. you think. Um, Tommy missed an overhead in his match against center and the breaker like one all and as I'm sitting there watching it I'm literally like he saw center guess to that side I, I'm pretty, I, I would guess like he has, it looks like a pretty easy overhead goes up bounces inside the service box Tommy hits, hits, hits the tape and I'm like I saw center on the other side kind of make a little like right left mm -hmm. and kind of ran that way as Tommy was probably about to make contact. And I'm like, I think he saw a move. Like, so then I tell the viewer, like you see these easy misses, like mm -hmm. they're not just missing. Like, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. there's a, like that person on the other side also plays a part. Mm -hmm. So you're just seeing them have a easy first ball miss. Like, Oh, they're not focused. Like, yeah, yeah maybe sometimes, <laughs> sometimes like that other person, like it's, it's a little bit, especially in stressful moments. I like to paint the context for that, for the person who's watching. So maybe they can be a bit more understanding in mm -hmm. their, in what they're saying, and then say like, "Oh, well, these are like the best tennis players in the world." <laughs> like, I said, "Oh, I could have done that." No, you couldn't. <laughs> like, <laughs> you, no, you couldn't. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like you couldn't. Like, so, and so I, that that part I kind of like enjoy. And like you say, sometimes they're bad misses. Sometimes mm -hmm. you like that's mm -hmm. what Nick is so good at. Like, I love listening like Nick's commentary mm -hmm. as well. He's honest. Like mm -hmm. Nick's just like brutally honest, which is just him. Um, and he'll just say like. <laughs> He'll say like horrendous drop shot, <laughs> like he'll just say it, like he'll just say it, and like whereas I'm like, uh, I don't know if I, I wouldn't oh, do that. Yeah. Like Nick style is Nick style, and I think that's yeah. why so many people even like listening to him. Yeah, but I feel like a lot. Some people actually do like it, but don't want to say they <laughs> yeah. like yeah, it yeah, because yeah, everyone is like very formal and understanding. But I still feel it's still. I think is it's nice to have that balance. Oh, 100 percent. That's exactly what I was going to say. Mm -hmm. Like you have a balance. Like and even if since starting commentary and and when i watch other sports broadcasts i see it differently now because i'm i'm also i'm trying to like see like the stuff that's going on behind yeah. the scenes like um if uh there's a bit of a miscommunication it's like somebody asks a question and then three people are there and one i'm supposed to answer and there's a little bit of like a little extended gap or someone maybe loses their train of thought i'm like oh i've been there like ooh. <laughs> i know but I, I so but i enjoy that too and I also enjoy seeing styles seeing styles of like Certain NBA commentators work really well together because their mm. styles match up. Mm. Certain football commentators work really well because their styles match up. It's like a style. And so, like you say, some people's style is just they're different, yeah. and, I, and I think there's room in sport and in tennis exactly. for everybody's style. Everybody can so, get a flavor of whatever they like. And I think you know. it's huge as well that you're a common player doing it because yeah, you can mm -hmm. give a different look, and mm -hmm. you, you, that's clearly what you've been doing, and people are loving it. So yeah, that's the, the thing is honestly, like while I enjoy doing it, there's so many times like I don't. I just don't feel good when I'm doing it. Wow. Like, like I feel like I'm. I feel like I. Like sometimes I may be a little wordy. Sometimes I don't. Here's, here's a great example. I'll say uh, sometimes when I'm calling a match in my my head when it happens, I'm like, ah, you idiot. When I it was uh, this actually happened when I did one of the interviews. Daniil played Kaboli. I finished their pre match interview and I was like, uh, Flavio, good luck. And then Daniil comes up. And I finished our interview and I go, Daniil, good luck. And I'm like, my inflection went up. Like I had something so else to say, to say and I just shut off. And then Daniil's just kind of like, all right. And then he goes, <laughs> and in my head, I'm like, you idiot, good luck. Just good luck. It's like, I, I'm like, Flavio, good luck. Daniil, good luck. And then I goes, Flavio, good luck. Daniil, good luck. <laughs> and, and it's like, I'm like, and I'm sitting there smiling like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like you, you went to the state. but like I feel I have those type moments when I'm doing commentary a lot. Mm. I'll have moments where like I don't end it the way that I want because mm -hmm. the point's about to start, or yeah. I don't. I could have said it better or something, and I'm like, <laughs> but then like people are always like, "Hey, I love I love what you do," and I'm like, "Really? really? Like, you're just being nice? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, huh? Like that's, that's crazy? Like really?" Um, so that's what it gets. It's weird. Like even mm. here and you read it, like I'm so thankful people enjoy it, but like, I don't, there's certain times when I'm like, Oh, I was good today. Yeah. Like yeah. I got my thoughts yeah. out. It was money. I had my phrases. I had whatever. I had my stats. I, you know, I but then mo vast majority of the time I'm like, I, I didn't do that well. Mm. Like I could have, 
could have maybe said that a little better. But and I feel more critical of myself. But then people come up and they're like, "Yo, you agree? We like your voice." <laughs> no, I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, "My voice? Like, what are you talking? About? It's the way that you say things, we like your voice." Some people, no, honestly, though, and because- I'm like. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, all right. The, 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 the people do say, like, yeah, you've got a good voice for it. Like, what's the saying about having a face for TV or oh, somebody's got a face for radio? Yeah, of, uh, I know. Of, uh, yeah, I think it was. You know the saying. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. Never, people will know. But yeah, yeah Chris, you, you are multi talented. Mm. So you need to embrace it, man. I'm telling you. <sighs> I'm telling you, because you're going to be in this thing for a long time. I tell, if you I, want, I always, I always tell people when they mention when they say something, I'll be like, "Well, when you're not really good at one thing, it's good to try to be a kind of okay at a bunch <laughs> yeah. of things." So I just got my hand and like, let's see what else sticks. Just the tennis thing is getting tough. Well, what's, been, what's been your favorite moment so far this this US Open? Because it's been a pretty special year for. Oh, calling Ben and Francis. Yeah, that's because oh, I sat courtside when they played last year. I wasn't. I was actually done. My time with ESPN was done. It was whatever quarters. I was getting ready to fly to Atlanta later that night or the next day. And I'd been at the site all day. And I was like, all right, I'm tired. And then I come down. I, I, I'm finally released. I come down, and I see Ben is warming up on Ash. And so I walk out there, and I'm, like, standing there talking to Brian. And I'm looking around, and people are kind of not trickling in yet, but there's – First person I see, I kid you not, I walk out of the court, Ben is hidden. I look to the left, Spike Lee is sitting right there. Oh, wow. And I'm like, Spike Lee here? Like, that's pretty cool. Like, whatever. Yeah. And I think Ben is hidden with Fenty, Andrew Fenty. Okay. And I'm like, I see Spike Lee there. And like, I look around, and I see, like, one of Ben's uncles. He comes up, and he talks, and they're like, oh, we're so excited for the night. Like, such a big night, whatever. And I'm, like, standing there, and I'm watching Ben hit. And I'm like, two of my best friends are about to play on Arthur Ashe Stadium um. at night. I got a credential. I can sit courtside and I'm going to go home back to the hotel. Like, yeah. I got to stay. Yeah. So then I like ended up staying, but I wasn't working the match. So I just went mm-hmm. and sat next to BG courtside and we just sat the whole match and just talked back and forth. And I remember watching that and being like the electricity in that place was nuts. Mm-hmm. I think that was the second time two black Americans had played on Arthur Stadium. Mm-hmm. Crazy. So I'm sitting up there like, wow, this is history. And then, um, the fact that they had to play again this year, third round, and then I got to call the match. I went from like just sitting there with BG, he had the earpiece, he was talking to like now I'm like watching them play the next year. It's a five set war. Yeah. Francis comes, Francis loses a crazy third set tiebreaker, same as he did last year to go down two sets to one, and then comes back and wins in five. Like <laughs> that's cool. Like especially with the context of the first year. Mm-hmm, exactly. mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's like I was ready to bounce out. I stayed and I was like actually really glad I did. Yeah. And then the next year it's like, hey, you can actually work this match. I sat courtside. Uh, no, no, no. Did I call? Yeah, I called that one. I called that one courtside. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't in the booth. I called that one courtside. Yeah, so, like, I'm yeah, sitting there saw... watching the whole time I did yeah. the interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I remember, because Ben looked at me one time. Yeah, I remember he was like, What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, he, he was cool. He, got, he gave me a smirk one time. But yeah, yeah. So, that was, that was, that for sure is probably the best moment nice. of calling. Was it, was it hard having to root for someone or were you just enjoying the. No, because like doing courtside, I'm not rooting for anybody. Mm-hmm. In, even in doing commentary, I'm not really rooting for anybody. My, I'm just I'm just explaining or painting the context of what's happening. So No, I mean like more for like you personally, as in because you described like, you know, you, two of your best friends were. Oh, I mean, I love them both. So, like, yeah, yeah, so it was I like. I just want to see who's going to come out on top. <laughs> I was just sitting there with popcorn. Like, it wasn't like, a, it wasn't like a, I'm going to sit here and like cheer him on. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. <laughs> well, like your know, friends are like, nah, I'm just like, oh, you boys about to go to battle. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm just yeah. enjoying it from a fan standpoint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. can and imagine. What, yeah. what a time in terms of, well, yeah, like you said, American tennis. So you've got obviously Francis and Taylor playing the men's semis. Um, we've also got Emma Navarro and Jessica Pabuda as well doing pretty well yeah. in the women's. Taylor Towns and Donald Young. Yeah. Obviously, Donald Young, there's a story there. You've got history with Young. Like, yeah, that's like, I mean, Donald's like my, he's. He's like my big brother. Yeah. Like he's, I've been, I've been super lucky to have, um, like some really, really like dope people in my tennis career and journey. Donald's like, he showed me like being a top level pro was actually possible. And then he also invested his own money to like take me to tournaments mm-hmm. and let me see pro tennis up close as his hitting partner. So like before I came on tour, like I knew John, I knew Stevie and Sam, I think. Yeah, because with D.Y. I was around them, like, I knew some, I knew Gael, I knew, uh, who else did I know already? A few guys, like, mm-hmm. Karlovich, like, I knew some people. Yeah. So, like, 
already because they were like, hey, you travel with Donald. I was like, yeah, like now I'm playing. So like he gave me that opportunity. Crazy. And I got to practice with him every single day for, you know, from the time of being 15, 16 to all the way through 21. So like I got really good really fast because of him. Because not many other guys had the chance to practice with pros like that, like that consistently. And I did. And he was 10 minutes from my parents' house. <laughs> like 10 minutes, my closest tennis center, it was, it was his parents' facility. Um, and um, yeah, so like I'm forever indebted. So I'm hoping they get the title. Yeah. I'm hoping they win tomorrow. I'm going to be what sitting there courtside. Yeah. Um, really looking forward to being able to go out there, cheer them on, and, and hopefully we can get D.Y., um, get him a title on, on his retirement. What a story. For sure. I think we have to wrap it up there, DC. All right. In terms of time. So, okay, yeah. Chris, man, thank you so much again for joining us. No live, problem, live guys. in New York. I say live. We're live now, but it won't <laughs> yeah. be live, obviously, when it goes out. Yeah. But, yeah, just appreciate your time, man, because you've come all the way, obviously, from your, your hotel. And, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. No, it's all good. Like I said at the beginning, like, you guys do such good, like, work. You guys, like, invest a lot of your time. I was like... I, at least I could do your time and money. If I, I'm sorry, I just want to be, it's not just a time thing. <laughs> your time and money into covering like us, into like you know, sp- like you know, just educating people as well. Like it, it's it's the least I could do to come and just kick Thank it with you guys. You. So for sure, uh, do it. We'll have to do it again. Try to plan somewhere else. Definitely, definitely. And yeah, thank guys, you. thank you so much for tuning in. Um, it's been a pleasure. So thanks again, Chris.